What I want to do now is I want to move and just show you a few of the features in the advanced mode. So the advanced mode has all the firm's data layers. So everything that you've seen so far will be included here. And I just want to highlight some of the additional customization that you can do when viewing active fires. I want to give you a quick tour of the geostationary active fire data and show how it can be useful for tracking the progression of a fire using the sub daily timeline and uh, briefly mention how to use the orbit tracks. Um, so to start with, Jenny's already gone through simple and time based. Um, she also mentioned custom. So custom allows you to um, turn individual layers on or off. You can also color code individual layers. So if you wanted to highlight a particular data layer, you could you could choose to do that. Um, up here on the pre-select, you can choose to display the fire by one either confidence or fire radiative power. Fire radiative power shows um, gives an idea of the intensity of the active fire during satellite overpass. And we're going to zoom in here to some of the fires in the northwest in the northern territories of Australia, where there's some big fires burning. So you can so this pre-select will work for any layer that you have checked. Alternatively, um, if I go back to fires, you can opt to customize one layer at a time. So in this case, I'm looking at VIRS, NOAA 20 data, and I might decide that I'm just interested in daytime fires. So I can turn the nighttime fires off and I'll just see daytime. Or alternatively, I can turn the daytime fires off. Or if you want to, like I showed before, you can actually change the color to, um, to see the difference uh, more readily just from, from, from viewing the data at a distance. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm just gonna reset this to the default. Okay, so this was a very large fire that occurred uh, pretty quickly. I'm going to change the date range to one day. So this is for today, and you can see that there have been a number of active fire counts today. In fact, this, this fire stretches a couple of, uh, I think it's 300 kilometers, it's a, it's a very big fire. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to turn on some of the geostationary data for you to look at. But before I do that, I just want to show you what the geostationary data looks like. So if we were to go to the advanced mode, there we are, and look at the geostationary data, here we are, I'm just gonna open this accordion here. And what I want to do is I want to show you um, the different geostationary layers. Okay, so I briefly mentioned geostationary data later on. We had a lot of requests to add this data into firms. I should just say that it's not NASA data and uh, it comes from various um, space agencies, uh, including NOAA, um, UMATSAT, ESA, and uh, JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. And you can find out more about each layer by clicking on these individual eye icons on the right-hand side of each layer. And this, that applies for all of the layers within firms. So geostationary satellites orbit high above the Earth's equator at speeds equal to the Earth's rotation. So they can provide continuous coverage for an area over time. And to illustrate their approximate coverage, I'm going to turn on data from GOES, which covers the Americas. And you'll see that we actually have four layers here. That's because we have two different algorithms. So we have data from GOES 16 and GOES 18, and we have data from two different sources. I'm not gonna go into that now, but you can find out more in, again, in the information layers or in the firm's frequently asked questions. Uh, covering uh, Africa and the Middle East, we have the Meteosat. We have data from Meteosat 9 and 11. And for Southeast Asia and Australia, we have data from Himawari. All right, so I'm going to turn the Himawari a layer on and we're going to zoom straight back into this area that we were looking at in the northern territories of Australia. And I'm also going to put on the um, VIRS SUMI MPP data. In fact, I'll put on all the polar orbiting data. I just want to say that the geostationary data is particularly useful because it has a high temporal resolution. So it provides data every 10 to 15 minutes within 30 minutes of satellite observation. 
And this is particularly useful if you don't want to have to wait uh, for the next polar orbiting satellite to get, uh, to get information. The downside is that these data have a much lower spatial resolution. They have a resolution of approximately two kilometers. And uh, I'll just illustrate that here. So here you're looking at, in red, the data from VIRS. So this data is 375 meters. Okay, but hopefully you can see that these yellow pixels are very large compared to the red VIRS pixels. And here we are, you can see just how small they are. Um, and so, so we've actually labeled the geostationary data as beta because we would prefer users to use the polar orbiting because we feel like it provides more reliable information. And, and also the other thing that I, I should just mention is that, that the GOES NOAA FDC algorithm is still being developed, so that might change. So, so there are a few things, a few caveats to consider when using the geostationary. So we'd say use it with caution, but in instances like this, when you have a huge fire, it can be very useful for looking at the trajectory of that fire over time. So here we're looking at one day of data, um, October the 18th. If I change that date to October the 17th, what I can do is we can use the sub daily menu to look at how that fire progressed. So if I click on sub daily, just to the left, uh, to the right of daily, uh, it automatically defaults to a four hour window. And here the time is set to 1850 UTC. And I'm gonna change that to 150 UTC. Okay, I'm gonna keep it on the same date. And as I say, you at the moment it's four hours and I can use the time slider to move this along to look at the next four hours. There we go, you can see now we've got data from Himawari and we will have data from, from VIRS NOAA 20. So this is particularly useful if you want to look at the progression of a fire. Um, you can change this uh, time interval to one hour or 50 minutes or whatever you want to do if you want to really identify how a fire has progressed. Uh, the other alternative, if you're interested in that, is um, you can also, you can look at the time since detection for a fire. But this, uh, and that would obviously only work if you're looking at one day, um, but this uh, sub-daily time interval is particularly useful if you want to look at um, how a fire has progressed over time.